Dr. Phil and Masab Hassan Youssef, the son of a Hamas leader, denounced two University of Michigan students who sympathized with Hamas in its October 7th attack against Israel in a clip that's now going viral. Let's watch. When somebody comes over a fence mm -hmm. and goes into someone's house mm -hmm. and burns their infant mm -hmm. in its crib, I don't give a damn why they did so it. It's wrong. Yusuf also took a turn criticizing the views of the pair. Yes, there is no difference. Really? The vast majority of the Palestinian people support Hamas. Really? This is a fact. This is proven by statistics and your silence now. You are not even, you cannot even condemn Hamas and say that what they did on October 7 was an act of a savage group. A lot going on there. For Yusuf to say this is a fact proven by statistics, but the reality being that Israel has prevented an election from happening in Palestine uh, is very telling. What statistics are you referring to? Maybe if they existed, he would say them there. I think uh, the most telling part also about this is Dr. Phil making this statement about crossing over a fence and burning a house with an infant in it. You wouldn't really know if that was about Israel or if that was about Hamas, given that the IDF has been burning houses since October 7th and before October 7th. And considering their, their carpet bombing, the Gaza Strip, there are families inside, including infants. I'm sure they are in cribs. He said he didn't care who did it. That is wrong. So does he think it's wrong that Israel is doing this too? If so, maybe he should mention that instead of just shouting at these students. Um, yeah, it, it seems a little hypocritical to be denouncing the violent actions of Hamas and dismissing the violent actions of Israel before and after October 7th. I think the poll he might have been referring to, I mean, there's a there's several, but the most recent one is from the Palestinian Center for Policy Survey and Research that found somewhere between 70 to 80 percent of Palestinians supported what Hamas did on October 7th. And then previously, there's been polls showing basically the same percentage of Palestinians um, support Hamas being essentially in charge in Gaza. So I don't think he's off base there. Your point about sort of the problem with equivocation from Dr. Phil is certainly well taken. I do think that in this clip, when you watch it a little bit further, these students are really reluctant to just outright say that what happened on October 7th was wrong. They basically attempt to justify it based on the history between the two countries and the, his the long history of the conflict. And I don't think it really should be that difficult to say that both Hamas and Israel have committed atrocities in the name of this war that they're waging on each other for centuries. I just, it, I find it hard to understand why people have a have a difficult time condemning both. Yeah, I think, you know, when you have the Palestinian Authority controlling the West Bank and you have this lack of elections, saying they support Hamas as a political group for leadership is, is different from saying they support an action by Hamas on one specific date. I think a lot of Palestinians have seen throughout their lifetime the prevention of their creation of a military to protect themselves and their land, the encroaching of Israel onto Palestinian territory, displacing families from their homes, uh, the violent attacks on Palestinians, I mean, from 1948 to October 7th and afterwards. I think they view this as an act of defense in the same way that after October 7th, so many people, this was the first they were hearing uh, about the, the war on Gaza, the war on Palestine by Israel. And they said, oh my gosh, this terrorist group has attacked this peaceful country, knowing very well this, this was actually an act of retaliation, an act of defense after so much of their land has been taken. If this was the United States and there was a, a group across our border that was taking our land, pushing people out of our houses, burning them, we would very well say an attack of us against them was justified. We have a right to defend ourselves. We can attack them back. But the, that same sort of moral calculation is not made for the Palestinians. And I don't know why one group for the same actions is, is called terrorists and the other group is called the defense forces. Now, I think that kind of logic for anyone who's saying condemn the actions of Hamas, yes, condemn violent actions, of course, but then say Israel has the right to do whatever they want in response, that is not condemning the violence that happened before October 7th. So if you if they really believe, you know, Dr. Phil, Yusuf, 
anyone who's making excuses for Israel today, if they really believe, you know, actions that are atrocities, that are terribly violent, you know, killing innocent civilians, then they would condemn the actions of Israel as well. And it seems to be, you know, picking sides and, and not having that same moral calculation made for both sides. There were 72 percent of Palestinian respondents in this poll taken after October 7th that said that they did think Hamas's actions were correct on that day. So I just wanted to clarify, it's not just that they support Hamas in leadership, but they did specifically say that they supported their actions on October 7th. But I do think that there is a difference between defending yourself and your country versus intentionally targeting civilians. And, and again, what Israel is doing now in terms of its offensive in Gaza and deliberately striking aid workers, et cetera, also wrong. I don't think it's difficult to say both, but I don't think it's fair to say that Hamas was just defending itself when they intentionally went out of their way to go after civilians, including women and children, who uh, there was a video of a, a woman being beheaded by a member of Hamas, um, people being uh, mutilated, their corpses being mutilated, holding up their heads in front of their cameras and sending videos to their family members. I mean, that's just fundamentally dehumanizing and you're targeting not the people who did this to you, you're doing exactly what they're accusing Israel of doing and what they say is wrong, which is uh, collective punishment. So I feel like you can't have it both ways. If Hamas wants, or if Palestine, and Hamas, by extension, wants to say that Israel is wrong because they collectively punish people in Gaza um, for the sins of Hamas. For then Hamas to turn around on October 7th and do exactly the same thing, do they not lose their moral authority there? Well, when the people that they did attack were occupiers on Palestinian land, these were people living in a settlement that was Palestinian land. Palestinians were pushed off of it and their houses were burned. Does that mean these these Israeli people who are settlers who did take in this? I don't land think the people at the music festival were settlers, though, case, Jessica. In that case, they're they're not innocent. They are that there are you know huge borders. This land is controlled by the Israeli defense. They've denied Palestinians any right to a military, which any sovereign state you know is allowed in this modern world to deny a population of people who have had this state for a long time, the ability to have a military, they don't have means to defend themselves. And so it's very difficult for them to go in and do any kind of strategic attack that would require military technology uh, and you know sophisticated weapons. So this is really all they can do is attack the people that are on you know their settlements. And so the fact that you know, you have Israel claiming to be the victim in a situation when they have the one of the most advanced militaries in the region equipped by U.S. weapons. I think this is a situation where it's a very unfair fight. So to attack occupiers on settled territory and to understand, you know, the, the situation that is in the Gaza Strip, that is in the, the territory that's been taken by Israel, that these people are occupiers. So to say, on the Israeli side that there are no innocents in Gaza when they're living on land that's been theirs for a very long time. They're not members of Hamas, they're not terrorists, but simultaneously to say that people who are occupying Palestinian stolen land are are innocent, it's, it's really not the same moral calculation that's being made. Oh, I agree from what Israel's saying, but what I'm saying is that I think both are in the wrong, but at the same time, the people who are living on what you call occupied land are not the people who stole it. Um, I mean, their government might have made actions that were morally incorrect. But then to go in and kill a child because you think that they're in uh, an occupied home, I, I think is completely unacceptable. And also the hundreds of people who are at this music festival, I don't think you could reasonably say that those people are settlers or were, um, or were improperly settling on occupied land. I mean, those people were simply going to enjoy a music festival. So I just, I, I think that the idea that Hamas was just going after the occupiers is not backed up by what they actually did on that day. It is, you know, Israeli civilians that move into Palestinian territory and directly move into that land. Part of this settlement project, the people who go in and move into Palestinian land. There are, are words for this in Hebrew for people who go in and, and make these settlements. It's just an explicit part of Israeli life for those who are participating in the occupation.
We're gonna have to leave it there. More rising after this.